Here's another quadratic function. So I'm going to give you a head start on it. If you can get all the way through the problem, you're looking at putting you know, the vertex, all your intercepts, and then now they ask us for what's called the axis of symmetry, which is the vertical line that runs right down the middle or center of your problem. So start completing the square. If you get to a point where you and your neighbor are done with the completing the square, check your answers before you move on and start graphing. So I'll give you a head start, and we'll finish it. So I have to factor out the negative 4 to create 1x squared, right? But we're only going to work with the stuff that's helping us create the quadratic. So we, we only want to work with these two terms because what we're saying is that negative 12 doesn't help me, so we're going to push it further down the problem. So what is positive 24 divided by negative 4? Negative 6. Negative 6. Good. I will be putting some new number inside to help us create a new quadratic. The negative 12 went further down, and we'll put something there. So we're going to take negative 6, divide by 2 is negative 3. I square it, and I get 9. That 9 gets added here. And right away, you can probably tell, you know, it factors nicely into two identical factors. <coughs> But what's on the dotted line? Negative 36. So what goes in the final blank? Positive 36. So we have negative 4 out front. I'm working with x as the variable. So we factor out the negative 4, did all that work? We're working with x. What did we put in parentheses up here? The negative 3, right? So that just comes down here. So we have x minus 3 on the length, x minus 3 on the width. So it's x minus 3 squared. Negative 12 plus 36 gives me positive 24. So where's your vertex? That's 324. To the right 3, up 24. So watch your scale a little bit, I guess. So to the right 3, up 24, just put an arbitrary point. We know this thing is opening down. Right? So it's going to hit the x-axis twice. So we will find two x-intercepts. Let's start by finding the y-intercept. Where's my y-intercept? Yes, to find the y-intercept, your x is 0. Again, you can go right here, or you can go all the way back to the original. If you go all the way back to the original, that's probably the easiest, the 0 and the 0, so we're left with negative 12. So if I said that's 24, negative 12 would be about right here. To find our x-intercepts, we're going to take this negative 4, x minus 3, and we're going to set it equal to 0. So we're setting the y value equal to 0. Subtract 24 on both sides. Go ahead and divide by negative 4. square root, what do we have to remember, plus or minus the square root of 6, and then we will add 3, so 3 plus the square root of 6, 3 minus the square root of 6 are the two intercepts. So with the 3 
plus the square root of 6. Square root of 6 is a little bit more than 2. So you'd say like 3 plus 2 point something, and that would end up, um, you know, right there. And I would just call it 3 plus the square root of 6 comma 0. And if I go 3 minus 2 points on it, it would be about right here. So 3 minus the square root of 6 comma 0. And then our graph is coming down here. That is your axis of symmetry. What is that line? How do you label the line? <coughs> X <coughs> equals 3. That vertical line will always go through your vertex. So it's X equals whatever the X is of your vertex, <coughs> axis of symmetry.